This video is sponsored by Squarespace, the Eliud Kipchoge of website builders. If you fix these simple things, you will be a faster runner for it. And I know what you're thinking, the answer is not to train harder. The first reason you might not be seeing progress in your running, despite all the training you're doing, is that you're not allowing your body to recover properly between your runs. After all, it's not during a long run or speed workout that your body adapts to get fitter and faster, it's afterwards while your body rests, repairs and recovers. Effective training is a cycle of putting stress on your body, then allowing it to recover and adapt in response to that stress, so that it can better handle the stress next time. If you don't allow your body to recover properly, you're messing with that adaptation phase and you won't fully realise the benefits of all your training. You end up in a frustrating place where you're training hard but not running any faster. So what's the one thing that most runners like you and I can do to instantly improve our recovery? I'm not talking about ice baths or sports massage. What most of us need more of in our lives is sleep. I've currently got an eight-month-old daughter, so I know I definitely do. It's while we sleep that our bodies go into full-on growth and repair mode. It's like a superpower. In fact, Dr. Matt Walker, professor of neuroscience at UC Berkeley, says that sleep is the greatest legal performance-enhancing drug that most people are neglecting in sport. So, realistically, even if, like me, it might not be feasible for you to go and get 8 hours of sleep every night right now, what would need to happen for you to get an extra 1 hour of sleep most nights? Okay, so this one's going to upset a few people, but it needs to be said. If you want to run faster and crush the workouts it takes to see progress as a runner, you need to make sure you're fueling yourself properly to be able to run faster. There are two specific areas I want to focus on here when it comes to nutrition, starting with your caloric intake. Are you consuming the energy you need to fuel the running you're doing? Not everybody runs for weight loss, but for those who do, the main reason why it works is that running really helps you to get into a calorie deficit, the state where you're burning more energy than you consume. But the problem with being in a calorie deficit comes when you try to run at moderate to high intensities for prolonged periods. Let's say you're doing a track workout or a 10k race. Being in a deficit will affect your muscle glycogen stores, meaning that you're limiting your body's preferred energy source for running faster. There's a lot of truth in the quote from fitness author Mark Sisson, who says that sometimes overtraining is simply undereating. So if calorie intake is one factor, then what about where your calories are coming from? You've probably come across the suggested benefits of eating a low carb diet or following a keto plan with the goal of training your body to become adapted to more efficiently burn fats for fuel. Honestly, this needs to be a whole different video in its own right, but here's my point. When it comes to running faster and pushing yourself at higher intensities, your body's preferred source of energy will always be carbohydrates. Changing your diet and training your body to burn fat for fuel makes sense if your sole focus is to run long distances at low intensities. But if you want to run faster and push harder, you're going to need to be eating plenty of carbohydrates to fuel your training and racing. Look at elite marathon runners, for example. I don't see any of them following a strict low carb plan. Before I expose some of the biggest mistakes holding your running back, let me tell you about this week's video sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're finally getting your own business up and running, want to make a place to share a new hobby, passion or obsession, or want to create a personal blog, Squarespace makes it super easy to create a professional website. Their user interface is extremely intuitive to use, plus with Squarespace you get access to all their marketing tools and analytics and personalised support from their award winning customer care team via email or live chat. Whatever you need, they're available 24-7 to help out. Go ahead and start your free trial today over at squarespace.com forward slash James Dunn. And when you realize you love it, make sure you enter the promo code James Dunn to get 10% off your first purchase. Now, here's one of the less obvious reasons why you might be struggling to run faster. You may be suffering from low iron levels in your blood and may even be borderline anemic. This obviously isn't as common as other factors like not getting enough sleep, but if you've been feeling overwhelming tiredness, general weakness, pale skin, and even heart palpitations, you should ask your doctor about your iron levels. Low iron levels are more common in women than men, but are definitely something we should be aware of as runners. As a runner, your ability to effectively transport oxygen around your body is pretty fundamental to your performance. If 
through having low iron levels, your body can't properly get oxygen to where it's needed, you're going to very quickly hit a limit to how hard you can push yourself. The good news is that there's lots we can do to help ourselves get more iron in our diets. Eating foods like kale, spinach, and other dark leafy greens will give you more iron, as will dried fruits like raisins and apricots. Red meats are also a good source of iron. Iron supplementation is an option too, but ask your doctor first about that one. Earlier I talked about the stress and adaptation cycle that's key to your progress as a runner, but let's talk a little bit more about the stress side of things. There's the stress you intentionally place upon your body through training, and then there's lifestyle stress, work-related stress, money worries, family pressures. The big problem here is that your body doesn't really know the difference between the two types of stress. It just knows that one way or another, it's operating under duress. So if you're stepping up to training for your first half marathon, for example, and at the same time you're starting a really demanding project at work, these things don't live in isolation of each other. Your, let's call it life stress, will affect the way in which your body recovers from training stresses, and you may find that you take longer to recover between sessions as your body never truly gets an opportunity to relax and recover while it's constantly in a state of high alert and ongoing stress. Of course, with modern living, I think we all feel a degree of stress from time to time, so how can we figure out what's normal versus the type of chronic stress that might become a problem? Well, that's where testing for heart rate variability comes in. Heart rate variability is a measure of the degree of variation in time between heartbeats. Greater variation means that we're in a good place and ready for anything, whereas lower variation means that you're dealing with more ongoing stress. Some running watches, like the Coros Vertix 2, now have the ability to measure heart rate variability themselves and can help you monitor stress and know when to back off your training versus pushing harder. Question of the day, what's the biggest stress factor that affects your running? Then there's the elephant in the room when it comes to talking about the power of running slow to run faster. While it's definitely true that slowing down and doing most of your running at an easy, aerobic pace will allow you to build a powerful aerobic engine capable of running faster at the same effort as before, you also need to get your body used to running faster. You might have heard me say this before, but I do firmly believe that long, slow runs build long, slow runners. You might be doing 80% or more of your weekly running mileage at an appropriately easy aerobic pace, and that's great. But particularly as you get closer to your target race, the other 20% of your mileage should be focused on quality speed work. If nothing else, to teach your legs what it is to run faster, turn over quicker, and reinforce the neural pathways that your neuromuscular system uses to run faster. Creating more variation in pace during your running week through polarizing your workouts, making your easy runs really easy and your hard runs really hard, will help you avoid that long, slow runner problem. Next up, click here for three simple things that pro runners do to run faster for longer. Surprisingly simple things that you can do too.